Ah, here we are. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Now, this is a very special game within the series. And it so happens to be one of my favorites. Pro Skater 4 is a very different game than the ones that came before it, but for me, the majority of those differences, as a matter of fact, all of those differences are exactly why I adore this lovable title. I think it's arguably one of the most innovative entries in the series, and some people might think that's a crazy thing to say, uh, but one created a whole genre, uh, two had manuals, and three had reverts. What did four bring to the table? A spine transfers? Who cares? Well, I'll tell you who cares. It's me. Uh, first off, not only do spine transfers allow for more control over your environment or even where you're going within the environment and further improve possibilities for lines and combos, but there's also just so, so much more than just spine transfers that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 brings to the party. So now, let's eviscerate the straw man that I created by talking about all of the m amazing uh, new additions to the series that 4 has. First off, let's talk about the inclusion of freestyle. Yes, the old school tricks of a bygone skate era are here in Pro Skater 4. Uh, this is an addition that I genuinely enjoy. Maybe I enjoyed it quite a bit more as a kid, but still to this day I think the animations and weirdo tricks are fun to do and still fun to look at. Interestingly, on a side note, uh, freestyle has never really gone away. It actually has a healthy looking scene over in Japan, which is awesome. While watching this may come off as goofy or, or lacking that raw style or, or pure amazement that street skating or vert skating bring to the table, it, it still is kind of cool to me. I don't know. These were fun tricks for me to goof around with when I was younger in real life, and as a kid within the games, I really relied on these tricks to get a solid amount of points in combos. I would do them at the end of combos to squeeze out some extra points, or sometimes I would even beat whole challenges with just these tricks exclusively. Doing freestyle tricks to get points in a vert competition was always something I kind of got a kick out of. I have a lot of nostalgia, you could say, for these tricks. In a time where I was much worse at the game, I used these tricks as kind of as a bit of a crutch because of how they worked. So when you do a manual, you can input various amounts of button combinations to perform each trick, like pressing circle and then square for primo or to rail, or pressing triangle and then square for a truck stand. In each trick stance, you can even press square square, and instead of changing the stance, it will give you a flip trick of sorts within the unique style of each stance. It's very cool stuff right here. They're easy to pull off, and most importantly, each stance change and trick you do counts as another point on your multiplier, and this gave a young me a much more consistent and reliable way of executing high combos. But I will say, in modern day, at my current skill level of Tony Hawk, which admittedly is still pretty low, I, I don't find as much use for freestyle tricks as I used to. All those positives are still there, but now I don't need that easy multiplier. Now I have no trouble cranking that bad boy up. The main reason that I don't find very much use for them nowadays is because they slow down your momentum almost entirely. It stops you from doing crazy shit like getting enough speed to, you know, start grinding telephone wires and stuff. Uh, keeping a good line going is an important part of building big scores for multiple reasons. But even that aside, even its efficacy aside, uh, why I prefer to do elaborate lines all over the map is because it's simply more fun. Uh, using the map to its fullest potential, hitting gaps, doing special tricks, it's all much more enjoyable to me than just sitting down and doing freestyle. Now, I still did use it here and there, but it was exclusively like at the end of combos and it was only if I had already lost all my momentum, so I just did it to try to push out a, a couple extra points. Overall, Freestyle is an addition that I, I am very happy is in the game, but it's one that nowadays I simply just don't use very much anymore. But that doesn't mean that I don't want to pay tribute to this very special little mechanic that I used to fucking love. And I'll always still have a little special place in my heart for freestyle. <laughs> So there actually are 
a bunch of various little gameplay tweaks and additions in 4 all over the place. Like, there's more special trick slots, uh, along with, of course, n new special tricks. Uh, skitching, uh, skating on top of moving objects. But, for me, in my opinion, the most important thing that they changed in this game, the thing that, for me, is an essential aspect to my enjoyment of Tony Hawk's mechanical system, and that's Four's new flip trick and grab controls. So in Pro Skater 1 through 3, you would do a kickflip by pressing left and square at the same time, and that's still the case, but 3 actually introduced uh, doing double kickflips and stuff like that by pressing left and then square twice. Press it three times and you do a triple kickflip, and this also applies to pop shove and impossibles. Pro Skater 4 takes this to the next level. It evolves this little kind of side mechanic that they had. What it does is it applies that same logic to tricks that have diagonal inputs because kick flip, heel flip, uh, front side pop shove it, backside pop shove it, or an impossible are all done with up, down, left, and right. But now you can press left and down and square twice to do a 360 flip. What that input normally does is just a varial flip. A varial flip is a pop shove it combined with a kick flip, and a tray flip is a 360 shove it combined with a kick flip. This makes sense. It's intuitive and it's fun to do. This also allows for awesome tricks to be added to the game in a more meaningful and frankly useful way. Awesome tricks like laser flips, 360 hard flips, and 360 inward heels. All that logic also applies to grabs as well. You can press like down circle for an air walk or down circle circle for a Christ air. And I think maybe my favorite part of this uh, new little mechanic is it makes this extremely satisfying sound whenever you press uh, either circle or square twice. This is the same noise that shows up when you do different stance changes or tricks within Flatland or Freestyle, and it's also what happens when you switch different grind positions. And actually, now that I think about it, uh, Freestyle flat ground tricks, I mean, they're really an extension of that grind mechanic in 3 as well. I mean, this noise right here is so classic Tony Hawk, I don't even know if I could fathom how many times in my life I've heard this little piece of audio. I don't know man, there's just something so satisfying to me about doing a 360 flip in Tony Hawk by pressing down left square square, as opposed to down down square, like in the old games. What is cool though, is that down down square input still exists in 4, so you can just map it to whatever trick you want. It expands the regular move list drastically. This is a change to the core system of the Tony Hawk's mechanics and controls, and I think that it's a subtle but very nuanced one at the same time. And it's one that I think is fairly important to the special feel that Tony Hawk games give me. So we've talked about some changes with the mechanics, but we have yet to converse about the biggest and most obvious change for made to the formula. And it's one that I can understand why people would be bummed to see, but nonetheless, it's a change that I welcomed as a kid, and in this day and age, I still think it was a brilliant decision. And that decision was that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 did away with the time limit in the career mode. This drastic change in structure marks the end of the classic pro skater era. And quite frankly, that's more than just fine with me. I love this step in Tony Hawk's evolution as a franchise. Yeah, the time limit gives the old games this super arcadey, old school feel, but looking back on it, I can't help but think that's really all it's good for. Uh, the time limit for me is just a vessel for that classic vibe. In actual practice, what it does to enhance the experience is really not much in my opinion. Sure, having to complete as many goals as fast as you can is fun and nerve-wracking in a really cool way, but if you're trying to just play the game uh, for either the first time or just wanting to explore and ponder the goals, 
It seems like more of a hindrance than a good feature to me, right? All it really does is take you back to the beginning of the map every few minutes. The game doesn't necessarily punish you very hard for not completing a certain amount of goals within the time limit or anything. It's really just a mandatory loading screen. All right, well, the, the biggest reason I, I think it's kind of lame is because it does hamper exploration. Exploration is one of the biggest parts of Tony Hawk, at least in my opinion, and it's one of the most fun aspects of the entire series, really. Sure, in the old games you could say that that's what Free Skate is for, but, well, now in 4, Career Mode is Free Skate, in a sense. This is how it works. Uh, you're dropped into a level, and you're free to move about it and skate it at your absolute leisure. You can just kind of casually find lines and analyze your environment. This appeals to me personally because I just adore zoning out and trying to get really high combo scores, admittedly sometimes for hours in between attempting goals. And when I eventually do decide to do some goals, the way that they work in 4, I think, is correct. It just feels right. So how you initiate goals is you find people around the map to talk to and they'll give you shit to do. Uh, some of the goals are classic ones, like collecting the skate letters. Uh, the game will give you two minutes to do it, just like in the older games. So that time limit factor, that, that sweaty, let's get it all done before I run out of time, that's still all over this game. Most missions have time limits on them. So really, it doesn't actually take anything away from the experience that much. Other missions could be competitions that you need to get at least third place in. Uh, some are specific things, even, that you need to grind or get a high score on. And there are a bunch, a bunch of new types of goals in 4 that would not be possible without this style of quest giving from NPCs. Like specific goals, where you need to like hit certain lines within levels. Uh, like this Alcatraz one. This is probably one of my favorite goals to do. This is dope because it's an objective that the developers created to highlight these really sick lines that are possible within these extremely robust and excellently designed levels. Missions like this one are more fun to me than any that are in the classic games. And for me, it is just preposterously fun and addicting, trying over and over and over again until you have finally made it all the way to the end and completed whatever specific weird challenge was thrown at you. Another example of a, a great type of goal is the new combo letters as well. You have to collect all the letters within one combo. I, I love these goals. Uh, on another side note, a one 10 out of 10 high tier new innovation that 4 brought to the series is that now when you choose to retry a goal, the game doesn't uh, end the song you're listening to anymore and then change it to a new one. Kind of like how when you wanted to restart your run in the 1 through 3, it would end that song and then start a new one at the beginning of the run, uh, which is awful. Four, you're constantly retrying goal, retrying goal, starting over. The fact that this doesn't end the song that's playing is, I mean, it's genius. It's perfect. So I'm all in for the new structure that 4 brought to the table. Not only do I think it's a great way to experience the game's levels, but I also think that it adds a little something to the games that was kind of lacking in the last three. And, well, that's a, a sense of place, a vibe of inhabiting an area. I'm talking about atmosphere, baby. <laughs> now, I know that the word atmosphere might be a little grandiose a word to use for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, but I'm telling you, there's a cool tone here that sets in after playing for hours and hours. These levels, there's a feel to them that's much more alive than in the previous games. There are people walking around, there are skaters skating, there are little mini games that you can go up to and do stuff in that aren't very fun, but I appreciate that they exist. 
because they service the atmosphere. Hell, just the fact that people are give you missions to do, give more life to the levels. You've got different people specific to the levels, and even a decent amount of pro skaters are quest givers as well. And what's wild is this game kind of starts the trend of these pro skaters actually voicing their own characters within the games. Keep your eyes peeled. He's a stinky, uh, um, sneaky guy. And they are all just gloriously horrendous voice actors. <laughs> and I adore it, of course. Of course I do. This is right up my alley. Whoa, look at that bastard rat. He's making fun of you. You better go get him. Smash him. I mean, most people kind of sound like they're having a good time, like Chad Muska. Man, you can't even fart on that one, kid. Best go home to preschool. And Atiba Jefferson is actually seems like he's having a, a good amount of fun. If your knees don't blow out, your back definitely will. But then you have like Andrew Reynolds, who sounds like he is way too cool to be doing this and putting in zero percent effort. Hey, I just got this line, man. Let's see what you got. Which, uh, now that I think about it, kind of makes sense because whenever Andrew Reynolds skates, it also looks like he's way too cool for it, and he's putting in zero percent effort. Hey, you got skills, man. Let's see if you can do this next line I'm working on. As bad as it is, it is very, very fun to listen to. And, and like I was saying, it gives this weirdo, exaggerated skateboard world some life. It makes this crazy place feel like a place, if that makes sense. Hell, I mean, even the main menu screen has a half pipe with people skating in it, and you can skate in it, too, from the main menu. Little little touches like this in 4 are what makes this game feel more like a world you get to be in than, than compared to any of the three games that came before it. All of this makes you really feel like you're skating around in an over-the-top, silly, goofy, super skateboard reality. Uh, this all helps give the game a feel, a style, and a tone and atmosphere. It's a tone of summertime, a tone of the smell of skateboard wax melting in the sun, a theme of giant huge skateboard shoes, this overall feeling of early 2000s warmth. You can bask in it. Now a criticism I could see someone having with the new structure of the goals is that they're much more, let's say, jackassian. Goals like grinding by frat guys to make them fall down, or grinding by football players to make them fall down, or grinding by tourists to make them fall down into the water. <laughs> there are a few of those, actually, and even the last one is a goal that's given to you by Bam Margera. So, I get it, it's all over this game. Uh, but I like these missions personally. I think they're fun, short, little novelties that don't bother me at all. All they do is add to the game's charm, and they are fully welcome within my mind. This is a tone that it's going for, and I dig it. Also, I loved Jackass, Viva La Bam, Wild Boys, all that shit when I was growing up. I'm in. I'm in on the Jackass stuff. Well, yeah, absolutely. I like it. That is not a point of criticism for me personally. Now, all that being said, there are a few goals that are much more tedious than they are fun, uh, and those are generally any one that involves you doing something, anything other than skating lines or getting high scores. Uh, for me, goals that I don't enjoy... For me, though, go goals like that... Uh, goals that I don't enjoy in 4 are pretty few and far between, but ones that immediately come to mind are like the Conum Slalom part, uh, the London race against the cops, uh, and, and even BAM's Endgame Pro Challenge. All of these are super hard for no reason and honestly took me an embarrassingly long amount of time to beat this time around. Uh, but, I mean, when it comes down to it, they're still fun, right? A little bit? Uh, hear me out. They're still 
uh, challenging. And all of these ones involve steering. And steering in Tony Hawk, like choosing where to go, turning and shit, is a lot more important than most people might think, right? Like hitting a ramp at a certain angle to get to a certain spot to continue a certain line is not always very easy. And your positioning and wherever you're directing your character to go is pretty, pretty important. And what these kind of racing, you know, steering missions uh, accomplish is they kind of, you know, put the handcuffs on you and, and make you try to steer in a lot harder way. So even though they're kind of not using the mechanics of the game, they still kind of are using the mechanics of the game in a way. But really, for every bad, uninteresting goal, there are 12, 30, more challenging and extremely fun goals. Really, there aren't many boring ones. 4 is filled to the brim with great challenges. Actually, I'd argue it has a harder, more complex, and interesting set of challenges than the three games that came before it, by a large margin. And uh, this is straight up possibly the best collection of goals as a whole within the entire series. That's just something I honestly feel comfortable saying. After this most recent playthrough, one of my biggest takeaways from the game is that it's very hard. Uh, I've been playing Tony Hawk for years, and uh, no, I'm not necessarily good at these games, but I have a decent amount of skill under my belt. Uh, but for for man, <laughs> this game really tested that skill. And that, guys, that is why I love this game. I've been playing Tony Hawk for, like I for like 15 fucking years, and there's still more of the mountain to climb in terms of my own skill at the game. And really, I think this game shines during the final stages. Towards the end, after a certain point, you get pro goals, and these are extra goals that you unlock for every level. Uh, firstly, I gotta say how I love that you get to go back to earlier maps and try different, more elaborate challenges on them. And really, some of them are hard as piss. And 4 isn't an easy game on its own. I know more than a few people have trouble with its regular goals, like the Misty Flip and Kona. But these pro goals are really on a whole nother level. Like this one, where you need to trick on everything in an area within the time limit. This is a lot harder than it sounds. Or this Chad Muska one, where you have to land six high scoring combos in a row. And the score goal is raised after each try, and if you fall even once, you have to start all the way over. Shit. Even a few of the six score challenges are tough as nails, like the 1,500,000 one in two minutes in Chicago and the Carnival. Probably two of my favorite missions because having to get a high score that high within two minutes basically means you need to do like two combos. They're a blast and they are a true challenge. Not to mention all the weird ones that require you to do something super specific, like the one where you need to transfer between these two shipping containers. This is so difficult. <coughs> oh, and how could I forget the hardest goal in all of the game? Arguably the hardest goal in all of Tony Hawk. No, I, I'd argue that this is the hardest thing in all of video games. Uh, Cuphead? <laughs> Okay, whatever. Um, Sekiro? Yeah, uh, that's a baby's toy. Dante must die mode? Okay, more like Dante must cry mode because he's way out of his league because all of those are nothing in comparison to manualing the switchbacks in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4. Fittingly, this mission is given to you by the manual master himself, Rodney Mullen. And he even says that this goal is for pros only. And when Rodney Mullen looks you in the eye sockets and tells you something is for pros only, he means it. All you gotta do is manual down the hill, but it's not a straight shot. You have to do these 180 degree turns two separate times. Trying to turn while maintaining your balance while manualing in Tony Hawk is the hardest thing in the world. For 
many reasons that I don't understand. Turning just fucks with your meter so bad. So take that on top of having to balance a manual for a ridiculously long time while avoiding hitting any walls that will automatically end your manual or even getting hit by the fucking golf cart guy. This is the hardest thing in the universe. I beat it the other day, no big deal. All those goals are ridiculously hard, but that's not all. After even another certain point within the game, you unlock these pro-specific final goals. They're these last final missions for every single pro skater in the game, and they're all totally unique to each individual. Some of these are stupid hard, like Jeff Rawley's shipyard combo goal, which is so difficult because just like the Chad Muska goal that I mentioned before where you need to combo uh, a certain amount of times, hitting a certain amount of points a bunch of times in a row, uh, it also makes you do it in an extremely restricted environment where there's no lines to hit basically and you have to like be extremely resourceful and each time you complete a combo it takes away certain objects within the environment this took me like two hours no shit you also have goals like uh bob burnquist's loop gap that is way harder than it ever has any right to be <laughs> Uh, and they're all neat because they give these uh, little bios of the pro skaters uh, and the missions themselves are kind of specific to the history and the legacy of each skater. Like Rodney Mullen has to combine a bunch of tricks that he invented and Andrew Reynolds needs to huck himself over giant gaps. Uh, it, it's a fun little piece of skateboarding celebration that's super nice to see. And after beating each one you get to watch their pro movie and it, each one is done by VM411 again. And they're fun. It's just cool. I dig it. When I skated when I was young, I'd see some sort of gap that I wanted to jump off and something would just come over me. I just have to go fly down it and get hurt or do it and then feel good about doing it. None of these interesting and unique goals and challenges would be possible in the old structure of the first three games. This is why the new style of quest giving is so good to me. The foundation of a genre had already been laid and when 4 came out, then was the time to refine it. Then it was the time for players to refine their skills at it. It was time to really get sweaty. And and in modern day, it's still a very sweaty game. So this time around, I actually finished every single goal in the game. I've never done that before in 4. And it honestly took me like 15 hours and a lot of crying, but I did it. And was it worth it? Fuck yeah, absolutely, I had a blast. When I sat down to play this game for the video, I, I didn't plan on beating every goal. I was just gonna beat the game and make the video. But while I was playing, I, I couldn't help myself. I felt compelled. Like I mentioned before, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 has that feel of Tony Hawk that I love. The timing, the animations, the mechanics, all of that come together to make, to me, a genuinely, extremely complex and nuanced gameplay system. This is a genre of game that I really think deserves more love for how deep it really can be. My brother said this the other day, this game has no ceiling. Uh, the possibilities are endless. The mountain is high. Have you seen these people on YouTube? They're insane. You can learn to be amazing at this game. The types of, of tricks you can do, lines you can string together, and combos you can land, they're all dependent on your skill. And, and as a whole, things like practicing, progressing, improving your skill, these are cornerstones of why video games are enjoyable. It's a cornerstone of why humans enjoy things. This may sound crazy, but Tony Hawk gives me the same feeling that Tekken gives me. The same feeling from Melee, the same feeling from Souls games, Devil May Cry, Streets of Rage 4, and you know what? It's also similar to the feeling that skateboarding gives me. 
Tony games, they're not just fun nostalgia trips. They're big giant nostalgia trips and they're like an actual discipline, an intensely fun and genuinely rewarding skill. One that was tested pretty dang well by 4. One uh, kind of negative aspect of 4 is that it uh, its unlockables uh, really aren't that great in my opinion. The Matt Hoffman BMX map is really one of my least favorites in the game and the secret characters are they're kind of boring as well. Uh, you got Django Fat, and that's cool that he's in here, but I'm not personally a Star Wars fan, so it doesn't really do much for me. And, well, then there's Mike V, uh, who, I, I don't know, he should really just be a, a part of the game proper, right? He, since uh, I kind of feel like I liked, at least, the whole idea of the Secret Skaters uh, kind of being anything but regular pro skaters. I don't know. That's just me, though. I, I do like Mike V, and he is a nostalgic character within my uh, skateboard watching past, so I'm I'm glad he's here. And then, I guess, the standout one for me would be Eddie from Iron Maiden. That's pretty dang cool. I am an Iron Maiden fan, and that's definitely my favorite one. And then there's the ultimate unlockable character, uh, the one that is pretty difficult to actually unlock. It's the one that requires you to find all of the money and all of the gaps within every single level. That's a challenge I've never completed in any Tony Hawk game, and I didn't do it here because, quite frankly, that just sounds like a daunting task. Instead, I decided to put in a cheat code. And the character that you get for that is Daisy, and, well, she feels kind of out of place. I, I gotta talk about this for a sec. Um, Daisy is voiced by a real-life porn star named Jenna Jameson. <laughs> And what was the thought process behind this? This is, is this really appropriate for a skateboarding game? I mean, who was in an Eversoft meeting and said, you know what our game needs? Uh, sex appeal. Yeah, all those people playing Tony Hawk, they need to be aroused. <laughs> it was probably this guy's idea right here. Damn, they're bigger than I thought they were. <laughs> I don't know, whatever. It, it just it feels kind of out of place to me. I don't know, I just had to mention it. But 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 my, my, well, my overall point here is that <laughs> the fact that there's not very many cool unlockables in this game, honestly, for me... That's 100% fine because this game rewards your skill with not new cosmetics, but new, harder challenges of skill. The goals themselves are fun enough to me that a reward is almost entirely ne it's unnecessary. I don't need one. There's nothing that you need to do to incentivize me to try to get to the end of the game. There's no reward that would have been good enough to even match the feeling that I got when I did finish all the goals, when I did get 1,500,000 uh, points within two minutes, twice. <laughs> and I'm sure there are some Tony Hawk psychos out there who are uh, preposterously good at the game and don't think that it's difficult at all and would just say that, oh, the only reason I think it's hard is because I suck at it. And that may be true, but these challenges are still very enjoyable for me to overcome, even if, in the grand scheme of things, some people wouldn't consider them difficult at all. For me, they were ridiculously hard, and I still got through it, and just the fact that I got through it, that's what makes it worth it. You know what I mean? Pro Skater 4 is its just a blast to play. From its more complex mechanics and more versatile mission structures, I think that it's, for me at least, easily the best pro skater. It's really a game that, to me, feels entirely timeless. Because its mechanics and gameplay are genuinely that good. So as we're wrapping this up here, I do want to talk about uh, just one last little thing. And that's that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 was the first game to have a goat easter egg. So that's, that's a notable little lovable part that we all enjoy. There's these guys who hang out and they stand behind goats. I don't know it, what Neversoft's trying to imply, but they're always in a corner away from the public and they look like they're having a good time. So, you know... I, are they fucking the goats? I don't... Aren't they, is that what this joke is? I don't get it, really. Are they, is that what the joke is? Is it... Is it <laughs> There's many more of these to come.
There's many more goat jokes within the series from this point on. Sometimes, to me, it, it, it kind of feels like Pro Skater 4 is a little forgotten. Sure, absolutely a lot of people love it, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would consider it their favorite Pro Skater as well. But I feel like sometimes when I'm listening to podcasts in the video game world, uh, people talking about Tony Hawk, they always seem to really uh, revere the first three games. And I seem to get the impression that a lot of people think that everything after three uh, was just not as good. I mean, the remaster that's going to come out soon is over one and two, and uh, the HD remakes that came out even before that were for Pro Skater 1 through 3. And when Pro Skater 5 came out, it was called Pro Skater 5, ignoring everything that came after 4. But, man, <laughs> I've kind of withheld this opinion a little bit uh, within this little series that I've created, but I think that 4 revolutionized the series and made it into one of my favorites of all time. My favorite games in the series all exist because of the innovations that 4 made. The next three Tony Hawk games in the series are my favorites. They're games that I genuinely believe are, are very special, special video games. They're very good, and, and these mechanics, these fun, enjoyable mechanics that can feel like a nuanced discipline, they only get expanded within the next three games. They're genuine masterpieces. And you know what? I really think Pro Skater 4 is actually the first masterpiece of the series. And, uh, I don't know, my definition of masterpiece may be uh, a little idiosyncratic, but a masterpiece for me is really... Any video game that breaks beyond just being entertainment. Anything that goes beyond that and really forms itself into what I consider a piece of art. Now, I don't necessarily consider Tony Hawk's Pro Skater for a piece of art. It's not a masterpiece in that way. I mean, it is a piece of art, right? It, it Like, by definition, absolutely it is. There's art in it. It is art, right? It's an expression of something. But... That's not the type of masterpiece I think it is. It's not the masterpiece in the same way that Silent Hill 2 is, for example. It's a masterpiece in the same way that Tekken 7 is, for me at least. Some people would definitely argue Tekken 7 is not a masterpiece, but it's the, it's the, it's the same reason that Devil May Cry 3 is a masterpiece. They're games that just break the boundaries of what's fun. They turn into something that's more than just having some sort of power fantasy and you know, kind of short-lived enjoyment, right? There, there's something that is a real challenge, a, a, a real, actual, genuine skill. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 absolutely breaks that barrier and it itself becomes an actual skill. Like I've said a bunch of times, it, this is a discipline, in a sense, right? It's just, I, I just feel like the first three games get all the love. When, for me, Man, it's all about 4, Thug 1, 2, and American Wasteland. Those are the games that I think about when I think about this series. And I don't even know if I can <laughs> explain how excited I am to talk about them. So, thank you for watching all the way to the end of the video. You are a maniac. But while you're going through this bout of insanity, maybe I can encourage you to do something even more insane, and it's subscribe to my tiny little channel. <laughs> uh, seriously though, uh, if you really did make it this far in the video, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, and I mean that from the deepest depths of my soul. I appreciate you spending your time listening to some psychotic man talk about how Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4 is a legitimate discipline. <laughs> <laughs> For real, thank you very much. I uh, hope to see you again soon. Alright, later. <laughs>